If you're not living under a rock, you might already know Google discontinued Inbox and Kiwi browser brought Chrome extensions to Android. So I got a reason to replace Inbox as well as Chrome. But are these the only apps that need to be replaced? Hmm. Now that I think of it, there are a lot that needs to be replaced. So here was the list. Mobile phones are supplied with the OEM's camera app. Now, most of us end up using that. But it's a whole new world when you start trying out camera mods. Gcam is a famous Google camera mod for almost every Snapdragon phone out there. In fact, even Exynos. You get the best dynamic range, portrait mode, etc. Like, I should just stop talking and show you the actual images. But the mods do crash a lot and they are highly unstable. So you can also check out Open Camera. It gives you pretty much all the manual controls, raw shooting for both photos and videos. Just give it a shot and let me know. And the best thing about raw footage is you can revive all the shadows and highlights from the footage. Plus the color grading works so well. If you make videos on your phone, do give open camera a shot. It will bring a significant difference in your footages. Android messages are good. With the recently added web interface, that's all good. But when I open it, it's all cluttered. You should try a third party messaging app. Like the one I'm using is Microsoft messages. When I open the app, I have only the messages I need to see. In the finance tab, I get my bank and OTP messages. I can quickly check my bank balance. Hey, hey, hey. Plus, I can even lock this section. The most useless promotional messages like season end sale for this day of every month is kept aside in the promotion tab. Some OEMs like MIUI or Oxygen OS give you their version of messaging apps, which are also good. But trust me, this one is way better. Surprisingly, another Google product in this list. Well, Chrome Mobile is great, but there are better alternatives out there. Like, I want to use extensions on my mobile or play video in the background. So I replaced Chrome with the recently updated Kiwi browser. Kiwi is built on Chromium, so you get the same look and feel like Google Chrome. You can log in with your Google account, so the same thing is sorted. What it does extra is it lets you use Chrome extensions on mobile. And lots of extensions, I mean. Well, the first third-party launcher anyone would have heard of is Nova Launcher. It's good, it works well, but most of the customizations and features are premium. So why not move on to something else? Because you get more features. So if you have a Windows laptop like me, Microsoft Launcher aka Arrow Launcher makes much more sense. It's nowhere close to the stock Pixel Launcher, but you get several customizations. Like you can set Bing daily wallpapers through the launcher, You have the gesture and icon pack settings, that's there. But my most favorite thing would be at a glance widget. It stacks all my most used app, sticky notes, documents, etc. And the cool thing is, these sticky notes are synced from my Android to Windows. If you download the phone companion app, you can also enable SMS notifications on your laptop. How cool is that? If you're a power user, you might find Native File Explorer to be pretty basic, like there is not much to do. Now, if you're using ES File Explorer, you should replace it right now. Rather, try Solid File Explorer. You get all the usual features like connecting your Google Drive, FTP files, LAN, SMB files, etc. Remote files, basically. You can also encrypt files, password protect them. But here's the coolest feature. If it detects a big screen or you're in landscape mode, it automatically gets divided into two different panes. So I can access my local files on one pane and drive files on another pane. And the most important feature, it doesn't send your data to the Chinese server and neither shows you lock screen ads. In case you're wondering, yes, it has root access. And if you want to upgrade to premium, it's just a one-time payment of 20 rupees, which is less than your day's coffee.
Now the phone dialer app is pretty basic. Now I really want to recommend Truecaller to you, but it's bloated with ads and not just sneaky with your data, but also with your contacts data. Unfortunately, there is no Truecaller alternative in India right now. While I would love to have it, but as of now, the least you can do is use the premium version of Truecaller. You not only get rid of ads on the lock screen, but with premium, you can also record your conversations. And the best thing, which makes me fall back to Truecaller frequently, is the call history. I mean, many times, I just forget to save important numbers and when I search for them, the native phone dialer has no answer. But when I go back to Truecaller, it has all my call logs and it populates the name for the unknown numbers as well. This doesn't happen frequently, but when it does, it's a lifesaver. And finally, YouTube Music. I mean, the free version of YouTube Music is a joke. What is a music player if it cannot play music in the background? A much better alternative is Y Music. It streams YouTube videos and plays only audio. That too even in the background, so you end up saving your daily geo data limit. It pretty much works like a music player, which YouTube Music should have. What I like is, switching from YouTube to Y Music is as basic as sharing the video and tapping on play. Y Music has many extra features apart from this, do check it out. Lastly, there is no good replacement for better hardware. If you are somehow still unsatisfied, you should try the ultimate replacement. <laughs> Just kidding, don't tell Minal though. And by the way, let me know in the comments below your favorite app and its functionalities. I go through all the comments and it's really overwhelming to see your replies. And do subscribe to stay connected. And on that note, bye bye, see you in the next one.